Morning, guys. Uh, it's good to be with you again. I want to talk to you a little bit more about House Bill 5717 and uh, what it's doing to our constitutional rights. So, starting at the top of uh, Section, uh, well, technically Section 6, the bottom of Section 5. Uh, Section 522 covers uh, suppressors, mufflers, and various cosmetic features such as flash suppressors, flash hiders, uh, things like that. Um, and any barrel that has a screwed uh, attachment option. So, whether that's a threaded barrel or uh, the option to be externally modified, just to be clear. So what it does is it bans those and it establishes a chain of penalties ranging from fines to jail time. All levels of this are a felony. So any conviction under Section 522 of this law would be your gun rights gone. gone. Um, however, under most states' laws, it would be a non-violent felony, so you would have the right to petition, but who knows what good that would do. Now, Section, of, section 600 uh, starts to cover the sale and uh, transfer uh or because they put it trafficking of firearms because they have to put a big scary criminal sounding word in front of it uh, so it sounds like they're fighting some great evil so it's not normal commerce of firearms it's the trafficking of firearms so in 601 it says you can only sell uh, or buy from a person that has the license mentioned in section 101 don't have that license, it's a felony. You may only buy or sell one handgun from a licensed dealer or individual through a licensed dealer once for 30 days. If you buy one at one shop and then go to another shop across town and you don't tell that shop across town that you're buying the gun over there, you're a felon and you lose your gun rights. Bam, just like that, it's a big fine. Possibility of jail time. Um, did both dealers get in trouble? Yeah, it's bad. Um, now there are uh, exemptions from this. Of course, there are. Uh, there is a lawful exchange of one firearm per thirty days between a between a, a husband and a wife, or a father and a son, or a mother and a daughter. Um, so if you bought a new rifle, and uh, because of previous legislation, you can't loan your firearm to anybody anymore. You have to go through a background check to do that now. Um, and you want to pass that weapon to your son or daughter, or husband or wife, whatever. You can go through your dealer and do that. That doesn't count as a, as a, as a uh, commercial sale or transfer. Uh, and then, of course, your police officers, federal agents, railroad cops, reservation cops, uh, all of them are exempt. Anybody, that, anybody in the federal government, politicians, people that work for politicians, uh, any of our omnipresent overlords, they can buy or sell guns as much as they please. Um, it also doesn't cover buyback programs. So the city can buy as many guns as it wants, even though the concept of calling it a buyback program is a little sketchy because they can't buy something they didn't sell, they are buy back something they didn't sell you. So calling it a buyback program is a little disingenuous in my opinion. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use the term uh, government forced repur or government forced purchasing programs. There you go, government forced purchasing programs. Uh, those are fine. They can buy as many guns as they want to. Although it's hard to call it buying because they're not set, you're not setting the price. It's more of a forced. Yeah, we won't get into that right now. Um, so, in, in, in a nutshell, that is 522 through uh, 604 of this bill. Obviously, there's some problems there. And you got to ask yourself what good can come of this? What good can come of not standing up to it? Now, clearly, Virginia showed us that they'll just wait until we can't get together and scare them and do whatever they want to. 
Scary times, people. Scary times. Um, as always, be decent to each other. We're on this together. God bless you.